Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, how are we doing? Today is Tuesday. Um, I'm here for my weekly live Bachelor recap, where basically I talk about The Bachelor, but I also talk about myself. Um, but today I actually know a lot more about The Bachelor since I paid attention to last night's episode a little bit more than I did the first week. So I am prepared. Um, I wanted to do this live stream last night, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. Um, I ended up signing up to work at my job, Shared News. So if you ever go to Shared News' YouTube channel, we do a lot of Bachelor content there. I'm hoping some of you guys have seen it. Um, so for me, it just made sense to uh, film with them last night after the episode, because um, if I film with them, I get paid to watch the episode, full transparency, and I also get it streamed earlier. So it just kind of makes sense. And then after that, because let's say I'm on West Coast time. So The Bachelor ended at 7 o'clock. So then I was working with Shared News until about 8.30. And then I went to an event last night for a new TV show premiere on Fox called Accused. Um, Billy Porter is actually the director of the show. So I was like running out the door because I wanted to make it to that event, which I actually was late for. I actually missed it basically but when i got there it was like still like like the after party event so i got drunk and then i woke up and then i went to hollywire today in venice to film and i had some other stuff to do so i actually have not had a chance to film my after show for the bachelor until now so now i'm here and i'm ready to talk about the episode with you guys i want to talk a little bit about mike fleiss and all his announcements on twitter and this bachelor nation divorce um that may or may not be real and yeah, I think that's like on the agenda for today and just whenever it comes to mind. So if you guys are here joining me live, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I see V is here, Vivian. Um, we do have a live chat for live viewers. So you guys could leave your questions, comments, and opinions in the live chat. But if you are seeing this after, just let me know your thoughts in the comments, but because the live will be saved. Um, let's get into the episode. Also, I'm going to be doing these lives. I'm going to try and do them every Monday night after the episode. Like, even if I film with Shared, I'll just do it after. Um, but because usually I don't have events on Monday, but last night I did. So the episode last night, they brought in the three bad bitches, um, uh, a bad bitch contest. Love it. They brought in Courtney Robertson, Victoria Fuller, and Taj Mahan. Like, Pretty, pretty solid. Three of the baddest bitches ever on The Bachelor. I could not believe how many people did not know Courtney. Well, I mean, she was from such a long time ago, Courtney Robertson. So she was on Ben Flanagan's season. She probably was the biggest villain, like, ever. Like, on the show. At least, like, her edit. Like, Michelle Money. There was this girl, Rosalind, from a long time ago. Olivia, Car Olivia Caridi. That was, like, Ben Higgins' season not too long ago. But there was some, like, OG villains. And Courtney was so iconic. She was such good TV. But the reason she was so iconic is because she actually won. So she went, like, skinny dipping with Ben, like, naked. All the girls had problems with her. And they all tried to warn her, to warn Ben about her. And, like, she literally made it through each week. She was so villainous. And then they kind of, like, changed her edit around. Or maybe she just, like, softened up towards the final few episodes, but she had a lot to answer to at the reunion. And I really suggest everybody just like watch that season if you have time. If not, just like YouTube her best moments because she is just such good TV. Um, v Contra says, I thought you were done with The Bachelor T anyway, so I'm just grateful to get a video. So I'm, I'm here with The Bachelor T. I'm going to keep up. I'm going to do the reviews. Um, I'm just prioritizing my life differently. So and so um, I'm just, you know, I'm busier and I'm just doing other things. And I'm still going to keep up. I don't know why I say that, but because I, I really mean it. And then I like change my mind. Um, but last night's episode was pretty decent. Anyway, I love Courtney. And then um, Tajwan ended up crashing the group date, which I thought was great. I don't know any spoilers. So I was like assuming that Tajwan was going to like stay in the house for like a minute. And unfortunately, Zach wasn't into it. Which I guess like, I can see that because they really didn't like have much of a connection. Um, a lot of people were like annoyed with Tajwan, the way she was trying to like call the other girls out for like not being ready. And I guess I was annoyed too. I was just like a little confused, like what, like why she was saying that. You know what I mean? I feel like she came in so hot considering like 
she's done the show three times. So I don't know why she felt the need to say, like, I don't think any of you guys are ready for Zach. Like, maybe a lot of these girls are clearly playing it safe. They're trying to, like, be all prim and proper and polite. Um, like, even last night when they were confronting Tajwan, like, they were all scared to say anything because none of them want to be, like, the villain or, like, rock the boat. Um, but, yeah. I wish Tajwan would have stayed anyway because I like her. But I did think she came across, like, a little, like, to the other girls. Like, it was kind of unnecessary what she said. Um, but yeah, she didn't stay her and Zach. I mean, they would never have lasted. I just thought it would have been fun to see her stay. I wonder how she feels about it. Knowing Tajwan, I mean, I don't know her, but tweeted at her. I feel like she probably doesn't care. I mean, some people might be embarrassed if you go back on the show and get sent home. Like, you know, she was rejected, but it's better that she at least tried because if she didn't, then she would have always wondered what if, right? Um, hey, Julia, she says, Zach made the right decision with respect to others. She probably was told to say those things. True. You never know. And then Chip says, I was rooting for Tajwan to stay. Me too. Yeah, there could be a production thing, but no one, no one tells you what to say. I mean, producers definitely like suggest things, but ultimately like everybody is responsible for what they're saying. But then, you know, things get edited out of context all the time. Anyway, Tajwan got sent home. Um, I forgot who got the group date rose because I didn't think it was, it was like Katie or something. I don't know. Let's talk about the Christina Mandrell of it all. Love her. Love her on social media. She um, just did a collaboration with Nate from uh, Gabby season and then Amanda Stanton, who I just interviewed. So if you guys want to see my interview with Amanda Stanton, it's on my channel. Um, a little parent TikTok and then like Michael A. Do edit it. So now I got an idea to maybe do a TikTok of like, the most iconic parents from Bachelor Nation, right? I'm just always coming up with different ideas. Um, I really like Christina. I thought Zach was going to send her home for a second, but he didn't. He played us all and he ended up keeping her. And then she got the rose, which really threatened Brianna. So this Brianna and Christina feud, I feel like Brianna, she came in so hot and like everyone loved her. Like she's charismatic. She's confident. She had a great personality. Like that's why America loved her. And I almost feel like it got to her and then she became insecure. Like, I wonder if she was really, how upset was she really about Christina's comment from night one? I'm glad that they showed it. It definitely like, at least what we think they showed from it, from the conversation, it didn't feel like Christina was like trying to be rude to Brianna. It felt like Christina was just really nervous on night one and she just like didn't know if she was going to get a rose and all her night one jitters were there and she took them out and she just made like a couple sly comments towards Brianna who already had safety. So that feeling that Christina had that she projected onto Brianna, Brianna had that same feeling the next week and she projected that onto Christina because Christina had the rose, which it's kind of crazy how they meet people's families like so soon, right? Like the first date, but like whatever, who cares? Um, so then Brianna projected that back on Christina since Christina was safe and this was Brianna's first time. So at the end of the day, like I still think Brianna is a star. I, I still think she's great, but I think she just like, for her, that was her night one. That was her first rose ceremony without safety. So it, she just got in her head and she got insecure. And like all of these girls are so nervous about being sent home, which I get like you're on a competition show. Like you want to stay longer. So I get why they're all like freaking out. Um, and it's really, but it's really just up to their connection with Zach and how much effort they put into Zach. So they don't need to be like comparing their connections to each other or like fighting with each other. Because at the end of the day, like Zach is the one who makes the decisions or most of the decisions, because obviously the producers, you know, want to keep certain girls around in the beginning, but ultimately like Zach chooses who he wants at the end. Um, v Condress says, I love Christina. Brianna is a beautiful mess. Um, Julia says, will be interesting to see if they reveal she's a famous Mandrell. What is the deal with Christina Mandrell? Like, are the Mandrells famous? Guys, everyone keeps on saying, who are the Mandrells? Let me know if you are in this live chat and you know. If not, I'm Googling it. Who are the Mandrells? I think Christina's cool, um, cool because she was in a Taylor Swift music video. Okay, Barbara Ann Mandrell is an American country music singer and musician. She also is credited as an actress and author. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, she was considered among country's most successful music artists. She had six number one singles and 25, 10 singles reached the Billboard Country Starts. Um, I'm showing my age, Julia. She's very famous. Yeah, I don't know who Barbara Mandrell is, but that makes sense why they let her show her last name on the on the whatever. So maybe I'll do a TikTok about Christina and her family history, right? Like always looking for ideas.
oh, I actually have her on my to-do list already. Christina Mandrell and family history. And then I also need to do the bachelor parents. I mean, we could just put it on my list and then we'll see if I get to it. Other things I have on my list right now are Teresa versus Melissa from Real Housewives of New Jersey. But that was old news. It was when Joe Judice, I mean, if you guys like Jersey Housewives, but Joe Judice like commented, I thought you loved your sister-in-law. Um, Heather Gay, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, revealing the truth about her black eye. Never got to that one. Eddie Murphy, Shrek Donkey. I don't know. He wanted a donkey movie. So I was like, okay, maybe I can make a TikTok about that. And then like Love is Blind couples that are still together since the new season's about to start. Um, reasons the Bachelor has gone downhill. I can make a video about that. I have a lot of ideas and some of them I never get to because, you know, new ideas pop up all the time. But Christina, single mom, Zach gave her a rose. We'll see what happens next week, next week with Brianna. I think that she could redeem herself, but I also can kind of see her maybe going home next week too. I feel like she's getting so much airtime and attention that like, it just doesn't feel like her and Zach have it. Like she just, it just doesn't feel like she's there for the long run. So I think that she might go home next week. Um, somebody who got a lot of airtime as well last night was Gabby. She said she is from Vermont. Um, she brought him ma maple syrup on night one and she got a lot of screen time. Like it was like seven minutes straight. If you follow bachelor data and it was like, she was nervous. She was comparing herself to the other girls. She was like saying she didn't get any time with Zach, her connections behind, I'm just like, give it a minute, right? Like, you guys have been here two days, like, five days. Like, calm down. There's so many girls. Like, I get why everyone's comparing themselves to each other. It's probably impossible not to when you're in that environment. But it's just like, calm down. Anyway, that was shown. So it's the edit, too. So it's not like, I'm sure all the girls are being like that. Anyway, I think everyone online is saying that she might be the winner or she could go really far. So I definitely expect that for her. She also really does look like Charlie D'Amelio. Don't you guys think? I can get a picture of her. I still don't know how to put pictures on this live stream. So if anybody wants to help me with that or anyone's good at graphic design, DM me on Instagram. Okay, she really does look like a D'Amelio. I think it's really crazy. Well, we talked about this last time, but I think it's so funny how all her friends have t-shirts with her face on it. Um, that's going to be interesting if she wins the show. Her and Zach, I don't think they were, I don't think they'll last. But anyway, we don't know anything about their relationship yet. So we'll see. So that was the episode. I liked it a little bit better. Um, I liked it because I was on Twitter tweeting and I just hit 10,000 followers on Twitter, which is kind of awesome because I'm like new to Twitter, like at least being active on it. I've had it since whatever, but I've really only been active like the last like six to eight months on Twitter. So I'm really proud of myself. I was like, oh my God, 10K. But what's annoying is I can't figure out how many Twitter followers I actually have. I just know I have over 10K. So I'm, I guess when I have 10,100, it will change to 10.1. But until then, I don't know if I have 10,035, 10,080. Um, I don't know how to figure that out. So I'll just Google it. Thank you, Vicondress. Um, What else did I say we were going to talk about? Mike Fleiss, we'll give him a second of airtime. Can you believe him? Can you believe him? He said there was a dramatic announcement coming on Monday. And then on Monday, he says the dramatic announcement is that he might start a podcast. And then he tweets today that he's just kidding. Like, you can't believe anything this man says. I get clickbait. And I get, like, you want people to talk about your show. And, like, you're just trolling with people and messing with people. But, like, you're the creator of the show. Like, no one's going to believe anything you said, anything you ever say. I mean, I don't really care that much because I just make TikToks about it. And I get a lot of views. Like last week, I got so many views off of one of the videos he, um, of, off of one of the things he tweeted. So do whatever you want, Mike. But I think that like, he's truly the definition of the girl who cried wolf. And I don't know, like, if he thinks he's funny. I mean, I think it's laughable, right? But he's pissing people off, which is probably what he wants. Weird. He's so weird. Um... And then The Bachelor divorces. Oh, I wanted to talk about Claire Crawley, too. We're going to talk about her after. I want to talk about her missing wedding dress. But The Bachelor divorces. So you know the blind from Dumois, right? Let me see if I can even, like, pull it up so I can read it. I don't even think it's real anymore, guys. I mean, I don't even know if I ever thought it was real. But will you accept this divorce? The synonyms are Jesse Palmer. So I thought maybe it could be Jesse Palmer and his wife. But the message is a married Bachelor franchise couple is setting up to announce a divorce. 
So married bachelor franchise couple. So it, that means it's two people who met on The Bachelor and are married. And Dumois usually has stuff right. Like, I would say nine times. I mean, I don't really know all. Of, I mean, I don't know. I was going to say maybe nine times out of ten, Dumois, like, knows what she's talking about and usually, like, has good intel. And I feel like because Dumois' account is so big, she doesn't really post stuff unless she actually knows. But it's also possible that someone like Mike Fleiss or someone who works on The Bachelor sent in a fake blind with and like Dumois like is like okay well this is reliable and then they're just posting this to get more people to talk about the show because the ratings have been so down and this is the lowest rating season and everyone's hating on this season so this could totally be made up but it also could totally be real but it's a married bachelor franchise couple waiting to announce a divorce and we found out about this like five days ago and there's been no clues there's been no inklings a lot of people thought it was different couples but then like all the couples seem so solid so i checked everyone's instagram pages who was still married like aria lauren just celebrated their um anniversary Catherine and sean just celebrated an anniversary like within a week you know these couples there's no way they're breaking up if they're posting that they just sold if they that they just celebrated an anniversary and like even ashley i posted something like lol like jared didn't wear his ring today and then Rachel said, like, in one of her TikToks, I think she posted, my celebrity crush is Brian. So, like, a lot of these couples are subliminally confirming that they're still together. And if you look at everyone's Instagram, it really seems like every, every single couple is fine. Like, even Caitlyn and Jason, who people were worried about, like, he's commenting on her pictures, like, today, yesterday. So, it really leads me to believe that there are no, there is no divorce. There is no divorce. I don't know. And I think that we'll find out when we find out if they actually do announce it. I hope that this is true because we're already like wondering who it is. Um, but I literally have no idea. Do you guys think you guys know anyone? Let me know in the comments. We're still here on this live chat. So please be sure to keep answering, asking me questions or giving your opinions on anything. I just like, don't think it's real. I don't know. Um, okay. Claire Crawley. I just read this story today. Apparently it's like two days old. Um, but she lost her wedding dress. Did you guys hear about this? So she kept her wedding dress in the car. Be and then she, and the reason she kept it in the car is because she was going back and forth to the wedding dress shop to do alterations, right? So a lot of people are like, why would she leave her wedding dress in the car? She went to Hawaii with her fiance, Ryan. And then when she came back, the dress was stolen. Her car was broken into. Where is she parking? I think like, I'm sorry, where are you parking? Like, hello, like she must have left her car in a city or she lives in Sacramento, right? So did she leave her car on her driveway? Does she live in an apartment? Like she clearly is living somewhere that's not super safe or she parked her car somewhere that's not super safe for someone to just like, you know, break in. I park my car in my garage, which is locked in my building. So I guess she just left it on the street. And I think the reason she left the dress in her car is because for two reasons, because everyone's like, why would she do that? She deserves that. One is the dress is probably really, really heavy. So if she is going back and forth to the store to do alterations and do fittings, like she probably doesn't want to bring it in and then bring it back downstairs, especially because she's clearly not parking close to where she lives. Right. Right. So that makes sense why she kept it in her car. And then two, she might be trying to hide the dress from her husband, from her fiance. So he doesn't see it before the wedding. Right. So that's why she kept it in her car if that makes sense. So the dress got stolen and I, uh, I saw a comment where they were like, well, that's probably a sign she shouldn't get married. And that's kind of what I was thinking too. I'm like, Claire, like this might be a sign from the universe. Like, yeah, you don't always listen to the signs. We've seen you get engaged so many times, but no, I actually think that the way the story ended up where Claire said that, um, the alteration, you know, the people at the store were able to get her a new dress. That was actually a better dress for her. It was on her Pinterest board. I'm like, all right, I believe it. And I do believe that Claire has found her person and I want her to get married and be happy. So I do think that this happened for a reason so that Claire can have a new dress that she was actually meant to get married in. And I believe that she was meant to get married in this dress. And she also said that her wedding is really soon. We have so many bachelor weddings this year. Claire's is happening soon. I don't know what that means. Hannah G and Dylan just announced that they picked a venue and a date for August. So they're going to get married this year. Kaylin and Dean, I think are getting married this year too. And then I know some of you guys don't care, but Colton Underwood posted on Instagram that the next wedding he goes to is his. So don't be surprised if like out of nowhere, People Magazine just drops pictures of Colton's wedding to Jordan, like literally next week or next month, because it's probably going to come out of nowhere. Um, Cause I don't think that he is really like, 
he's not an influencer. Like he doesn't like share his life. You know, a lot of these, some of these people like share their lives and their stories. And then like other people don't share anything about their lives, but it, it gets reported on regardless because they were on the bachelor. So those are everything. I think I, those are all the key points. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed the live. Um, also, if you haven't checked out my live interview with Ari, um, former bachelor also, um, was on traders. The interview is on my Instagram. And I said this before on my live stream, but the Wi-Fi was bad. So there is some issues with it, but you will still get all the info you needed. And I also just downloaded it. So I'm going to be posting the interview on my YouTube channel and I'm going to try and edit it a little bit to make it sound smoother. Um, so I hope that you guys listen to it because it's really good. It's a really good interview, especially if you liked the show Traders. Like Ari did not do any podcasts or interviews. He gave me the exclusive which like is awesome. So if you care, like, you know, definitely check that out. I was just so invested in that show. So for me, super cool. Also, I went to Lake Arrowhead last weekend and I had a really great time and I actually decided to vlog on my phone. So I'm going to be posting my vlog tomorrow on my YouTube channel, which is going to be a week in the life. So I vlogged a few things I was doing throughout the week, but a lot of the vlog is going to be me going to Lake Arrowhead and my experience there. I actually can't wait to finish editing it because I'm curious about what I did. I know what I did, but I'm curious to see it back because it was a lot of fun. And then... In two weeks on my podcast and on my YouTube channel, I have an interview with James Kennedy and Ali Luber. They are from Vanderpump Rules. The new season of Vanderpump Rules comes out February 8th or 9th, I believe. So we already filmed the interview. I rented out a studio a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to edit it together and put it up, not this Monday, the Monday after. This Monday, I'm going to put up my interview with Ari, which is already on Instagram if you want to see it. But if not, you can wait, and I will put it on my YouTube channel and on my Spotify. And then the week after that will be James and Ali. And then we'll see what happens the week after that. I've been doing interviews every single Monday, and I actually have three interviews three or four that I only posted to my YouTube channel with Madeline and Ray, both from the ultimatum. And then Jason Tardick, who was on the bachelor. I never uploaded those to my Spotify podcast. So if I ever miss a week or I don't have time to interview someone, then I'm just going to use those three interviews to post on the Monday so that I can, can keep up with this consistent new interview every single Monday. And I have a few more really exciting interviews coming up with some alumni from the bachelor and, um, some other reality TV people. So cannot wait to share those. Um, I, I don't want to say anything or give any teases until after they're already filmed. So stay tuned, but they're definitely people you want to hear from. Um, thank you so much, Celeste. I really appreciate you. And I really appreciate everybody who joined my live. Um, you guys are all the best. So uh, let me know. I don't know. Let me know what, what other videos you want me to make, what other shows you want me to cover. February is going to be a really busy month because The Perfect Match is coming to Netflix, Vanderpump Rules, Summer House, Real Houses of New Jersey, The Bachelor. But also there's other there's two other shows that I am on campaigns for. One of them is on Freeform. And then I'm also going to be talking a lot about a show for Fox called Farmer Wants a Wife. If you guys haven't heard about this show yet, basically four farmers are looking for a wife. So they find girls from like the city and they take them and put them on their farm and see if they can handle it. And then they fall in love. So I am excited to watch that show and... I'm excited to cover it. And then I'm also excited to see what happens with Special Forces on Fox. If you guys aren't watching, there's only a few episodes left. And I know that the finale gets really good and it gets really good on episode eight. So you guys definitely want to keep up with Special Forces, but I will do all of the updates on my TikTok of all of these shows all the time. So make sure you guys follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, Zachary Reality. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. Um, I want to hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, but that could take a while, but we'll get there eventually. And if you did, if you missed the live stream, comment below your thoughts and I will see you guys soon. Goodbye. <laughs> see ya.